coach for me, I want to start with you. Like kind of, what do you remember about that? That season was your second in Kansas city, a lot of optimism going into year two. Uh, you know, we'd seen the offense really start to explode at the end. You guys won something like three out of your last five. And then you go to Cleveland for week one and what a shootout it would be coach. Oh yeah. In fact, that was an embarrassing win, you know, and all wins are good ones, but that was, I always feel uh, for the other side. Uh, I always feel for the opponent when a game like that happens, you know, because I, you know, they're trying to build a program there and then they win the game and then they lose it, you know, on a, uh, a penalty when he takes his helmet off and we get, oh, oh uh, I don't think about it very often because I'm not asked about that game as much as I am the miracle of the middle lands, you know, in the 19, what was that? 78 a long time yeah. ago. But uh, I actually thought our second year, we would end up with a better win loss record than we did. We went eight and eight and, uh, but we, we just couldn't stop anybody, but our offense was really coming uh, into its own mature, both running and throwing. And, but we still didn't win enough games to make the playoffs. Yeah. And Dwayne, you guys, did make the playoffs there in Cleveland. In that game, a lot of people forget they want to talk about the helmet toss. You led the Browns in tackles with eight tackles yeah. that day. What do you remember going into that uh, game against the Chiefs, Kelly Holcomb starting, and you guys' defense yeah. going against the high-powered offense? For me, obviously, Tony Gonzalez. I've, you know, um, I had a very, um, you know, uh, detailed week studying and everything. I know I had to face Tony. We were really good friends and talked in the offseason some. And um, that was really on my mind. I ended up having a good game, I, and, and that was uh, definitely – I ended up watching the game a few times. But the hardest thing for me about that game, like Coach said, is the way it ended. Um, you know, uh, we like to play clean football, um, and I got excited at the end. I, I didn't know what was going on. I thought I had got him down. Um, so, therefore, um, it was – you know, it was a rough week. I had to individually go and, and apologize to pretty much each and in, each teammate I had, I, I couldn't stand it. But, yeah, that, uh, what a terrible memory. And like he said, <laughs> I think about it all the time. I don't think – I'm not going to say a week. I, it used to be a week. I'm, I'm going to say now I don't think a month goes by. <laughs> so maybe, maybe to get to a point where I can get to a year goes by. But it hasn't been a month yet that I Man. don't sit there and think about that and, and um, you know, how things would have ended up for, for myself as well as the team. Yeah. Well, Wait, let me ask you, as a former lineman, I was going to ask you, wasn't Trent Green in the grasp at that moment? Shouldn't the play have come to yeah. an end? Wasn't <laughs> well, that a sack oh. on the play? I mean, <laughs> I, I, I'm trying to throw some goodwill towards you there, buddy. Yeah, yeah. I think, um, well, I'm not sure if we had replay. I'm not sure if we had replay then or not. I'm not sure in 02. Did we have replay? Yeah, I don't think you could have challenged in the grasp, though. No, I don't think so neither. So it was just, it was just, it was the right call. I think I, I, after I've seen it a few times, he was actually able to get it off before his knee touched, I think. Well, Trent, last season, uh, the Chiefs played the Browns in week one. Uh, the, the time they did before that, it was 2002. Chiefs at uh, the Browns, and we had Dick Vermeil and Dwayne Rudd on to kind of relive that memory of Dwayne <laughs> Rudd throwing his helmet. Was that the craziest game you've been in? And just take us through that play of you kind of being spun around, flipping it to Dante, realizing that wait. the play was going to extend. I mean, just what uh, a game. Well, wait a second. You got Dwayne Rudd to come on and talk about it? We did. It took a lot of doing, I will say that. He was oh, not too goodness. thrilled about it, but we, we finally goodness. convinced That's, him. Uh, <laughs> that, is, that is cool. That, yeah. Um. So the crazy thing is, is I know a number of the coaches that were on that staff at the time. And, and uh, so, yeah, we've had, we've had some, well, I guess on my side of it, we had some laughs on their side of it, they had some <laughs> tears. So, um, you know, it was, it was just uh, uh, one of those things, opening, opening, uh, opening game of the season. And uh, you know, 2001 had been disappointing. Uh, also obviously with nine 11 kind of shaking things up at the season and what was going on around the country. It just, it just was an emotional roller coaster of things that went on in 2001 and 2002. We had, uh, we had high expectations. We went into Cleveland and put up a bunch of points, but when it came down to it, here we were final play of the game. And uh, you know, we needed, we needed points and we were at midfield and, you know, we had Morton Anderson and, and uh, it was like, okay, I can't, you know, the, the one thing, you know, Terry Shea, my quarterback coach with the, with the chiefs at that time, you know, he's like, you know, on the final play, whether it's a two-point play or final point of a game, uh, you can't go down with the ball. So I was trying to delay and and let the receivers get down to the end zone because I didn't, you know, in the amount of time I was going to throw it, there was no way 
So I tried avoiding uh, the sack by Rudd. And, and as he was spinning to throw me down, I just kind of caught a glimpse of John Tate out of the corner of my <laughs> eye. And I, I just happened to flip it towards him as I, before I hit the ground. Now, you have to remember the NFL, you know, they always put uh, emphasis on certain rules. So certain rules that are in place that don't necessarily get enforced as much, they'll say, hey, listen, this rule's been there. We're going to enforce it. We're going to pay a lot of attention to it. So we're going to really enforce it because we haven't been doing a good enough job of it in previous years. And then there's new plays or new penalties that they put in that there's a point of emphasis on those. Well, there was always a point of emphasis or there was always a rule about taking your helmet off in the field of play. Well, it kind of gotten, it had kind of gotten away from officials because guys were, you know, if you remember Emmett Smith after every touchdown, you know, when he was in Dallas in the, in, you know, in the nineties, right. He would take his helmet off. And it, I mean, so I'm not saying it was all Emmett's fault that this happened, but there were a lot of guys <laughs> taking their helmets off in the field of play, whether it be to celebrate offensive play, defensive play, whatever it is. So the NFL that preseason had said, we're going to make a point of emphasis on taking your helmet off. Well, Dwayne, thinking he had the sack and the game was over, threw his helmet off. And uh, it'd be interesting to hear his take on this whole thing. But uh, it's, uh, he, he, threw his, he threw his helmet off. And, uh, and, and I knew, right, the flag comes down. And I'm immediately thinking, okay, it's probably a holding call. If it's a holding call, the game's over, you know, because of where the, the, where the flag was thrown. But then I glimpse out of my eye, out of the corner of my eye, and I see Dwayne kind of marching around the field without his helmet on. And he's like celebrating the end of the game. And I'm like, hey, guys, we, we got a free play coming. You know, John Tate was rumbling down the sideline <laughs> and everything. And, and I'm like, guys, we got a free play coming. This isn't over uh, because I knew the rule. And, uh, and so sure enough, the, the penalty happened. Morton came on, got the kick, and uh, we won the game. And um, people in Cleveland still hate that story. I've had the Browns numerous times in Cleveland. I can't tell you how many times fans have said something to me about that play. Uh, because, uh, because yeah, there was, that was, that was, a, that was a crazy way to end a game, let alone the, let alone the season opener. Oh, absolutely <laughs> priceless. And we've got, I'll have to send you that, uh, clip from Dwayne Rudd as we had him on with coach Vermeil. All, all Dick Vermeil could say was we were just felt so bad for that other team, man. <laughs> <That's what laughs> for you. I just felt so bad for the Browns. They played so well. Quincy Morgan goes nuts, Kelly Holcomb. And, uh, then that happens. That's football for you. That's any, a game could end, uh, any possible way. We've learned that. Hey, I tell you, Hey, not to, not to interrupt you. No. Coach may have felt bad, but he sure as hell was glad we got that win. <laughs> I'll tell you that much. <laughs> hey, I'll take him any way I could get him. I, I was in college at yes. the time and I just went nuts for that. John Tate. And it wouldn't happen if John Tate hadn't gotten like 20 yards downfield. It yeah. would been yes. a close enough field goal so a lot had to well, go here's right. the here's the funny thing about after we win the game we're on the plane we're going back we're all celebrating it you know i i finally say to john i go john why the hell did you step out of bounds i'm like <laughs> it's the last play of the game if you step out of bounds the game's over I so here here the reality of it is he should have just lateral it or blindly like thrown it up into the air to let somebody you know to let somebody get it right he shouldn't just step out of bounds because yeah. the game's over. so i'm like but had he not done that, let's say he had thrown it up in the air and the Browns get the ball back. It's over. Yeah. Then it's over, or at least the penalty would have been the penalty would have been from the line of scrimmage. Uh, and still that wouldn't have been close enough for Morton Anderson to kick it. Right. But because of because John stepped out of bounds, then the penalty was enforced from where John stepped out of bounds, which all of a sudden made it close enough to kick. So I said. In reality, John, you were in the wrong for not lateraling the ball. I go, but but I'm really glad you didn't lateral the ball because had it been turned over, then that rule that where the position would have been, we, you know. Uh, so it's great. It's crazy how that all how that all shakes up. Oh, this is great. 